Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. We got a big time ACC matchup in the Atlantic as Wake Forest goes on the road to Florida State. Wake Forest just took a brutal loss against Clemson. The first time Wake Forest has really hung in there with Clemson, which was good to see. Now they go on the road to play Florida State. This is going to be a really good game. I think a lot of Florida State fans kind of think of Wake Forest as that old Wake Forest. This is a very good Wake Forest team. On the other hand, this is a very, very good Florida State team that uh, we, we've been talking a lot about Florida State because it's an interesting team in the terms of Mike Norvell on the hot seat. What is this Florida State gonna, team going to do with all this talent? They've lived up to it. This is a very fun Florida State team to watch. And the culture that we're starting to see Mike Norvell put together is really exciting if you're a Florida State fan. Before we get into it, though, I just wanted to say thank you guys for all the support. Honestly, the Seminole fans have been absolutely awesome. I did go to Wake Forest. I know a lot about the team. I'm going to try to keep this as impartial as I can get. But again, the Seminoles fans, we talked a lot of Florida State football. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing. We actually do really, really do appreciate y'all. Let's get into the matchup. I want to start by talking about Florida State and the injuries. I mean, when you take a look at the most important players for this Florida State team, almost all those top five guys have been battling injuries. I mean, you saw Jordan Travis go down against Louisville. He was obviously back. He looked to be back. And we'll talk about Jordan Travis a little later. Robert Scott Jr., Fabian Lovett, Jared Verse, Amari Gaynor. I mean, all, all guys who are day-to-day. -day. Winston Wright coming back from the car accident. He is day-to-day, -day too. This is a game where you definitely have to keep in mind who's going to be playing. Florida State has battled so many injuries and what you're so impressed with is they're phone up for no navigating the, one of the best interior defense alignment in the country. Fabian Lovett being out for a significant time. Jared verse, who's looking like he's one of the best edge defenders, Robert Scott jr. Who I think could be a legit day two draft pick. I mean, these guys in Jordan Travis going out against one of your bigger games against Louisville. I mean, they've weathered the storm of just some brutal injury luck. If they can get some of these guys back, this is a really dangerous team. Let's start talking about the matchup. Now, where can Wake Forest hurt you? They, they hurt you through the air. How are they able to move the ball so much against the dominant, dominant Clemson defense was press the ball vertically down the boundary. Guys like A.T. Perry, Donovan Green. A.T. Perry, I think, is a legit first-round NFL draft wide receiver. Those Clemson DBs did not know what to do with the ball in the air against like physically dominant wide receivers like A.T. Perry and Donovan Green. It's very rare to see Clemson get outmatched athletically when you're talking about the ACC, other ACC programs. On the perimeter, they were being outmatched. A.T. Perry, Donovan Green, two guys who really, really can make plays on the boundary, vertically down the field. Florida State, they've been very successful stopping explosive passing games and, and stopping passing games in general. I mean, they've only allowed 165 yards per game through the air. You take a look at who they played. It's not like the most dominant passing games in LSU, Louisville, and Boston College, but they've looked really, really good. I think when you look at the key to the game for Florida State winning in Tallahassee, part of it is stopping this explosive wide receivers on Wake Forest. I mean, Wake Forest likes to get those chunk plays. They run that really, really slow mesh point. They wait for those safeties to come up, and then they try to get the ball to A.T. Perry, Diamond Green down the field, and that's how they score so many points. Flip side, Florida State on the offense side of the football. We've been talking a lot about Jordan Travis, and a lot of the – a lot of the rhetoric has been Florida State goes as far as Jordan Travis takes him, and guess what? He's taking them extremely far. A couple of things I want to notice. He's only thrown five touchdown passes, but he's pushed the ball down the field very well. He's completing 65% of his balls, but a lot of these are vertically down the field. He's averaging over 10 yards per completion, which is a really impressive stat when you, when you think about how Jordan Travis has looked the last couple of years. That vertical passing game was missing, and partly, partly was – there was just no wide receivers who were really threats. You look at the guys last year, Joshua, Joe, Jay Sean Corbin led the team in receptions. Andrew Parchman was kind of your guy who pressed the field vertically. And those guys aren't people that you're really afraid of. Now, incoming, a lot of transfers. Got to talk a little bit about Johnny Wilson, who's, I mean, I don't want to say he's Mike Evans, but when you watch him play, he kind of reminds you of Mike Evans. The way he can go up above the rim with that 6'7 frame, the body control he shows at that 6'7 and the speed he shows vertically, that's where you want to attack Wake Forest. That's how Clemson. DJU had his best game of the year, and it was primarily on those chunk plays vertically down the field. If you want to score on this Wake Forest team, they're going to, you got to beat them over the top. 
and if Jordan Travis can do that, I think Florida State can win this football game. Another thing I want to talk about is keeping that Wake Forest offense off the field. Wake Forest wants to get into that shootout running gun mode, and they kind of got Clemson into that mode a little bit yesterday. And that was partially why they were able to hang around. Can Florida State establish that run, keep the ball out of Sam Hartman, who's one of the best, if not the best quarterback in the ACC, keep the ball out of his hands? I think that's going to be a massive question when you're looking at who's going to win this game. Now, getting to the pick, Florida State, come. they opened up at a three-point favorite. They've been all the way up. I have it as it's four here. I've seen the number as high as six. I'm not necessarily going to lay the points with Florida State, but I do think they can win this football game. Pending some injuries, I'm definitely not placing any bets till I know really who's going to play, and we might not know. And this might not be a game that we're betting because I really do like Wake Forest, but I also really like Florida State. And quite frankly, when you talk about playing in Tallahassee when Florida State's good, we've all seen what what, what a Florida State seminal football atmosphere looks like when they're not good. It's not great. But when they're good and fans are excited about this program, which they have to be right now as a 4-0 team, a top 25 team, you saw it last year. Opening week, Bobby Bowden's Memorial game, Notre Dame come to town. Electric atmosphere. I think we'll see that this this weekend for Wake Forest. And Wake Forest isn't playing that many, even the many big atmospheres playing at Truist Field. Can they use that to their advantage? I'm extremely excited for this game. I do want to wait till we see what kind of injuries we see. But this is going to be a game that you look at if you want to play for an ACC championship game. It, it runs through both of these schools. Obviously, you have to go beat Clemson, but you also really have to take care of business against teams like Wake Forest and NC State. And if you're a Seminoles fan, you've got to take care of business at Wake Forest. And then obviously you go right, I believe, go right on the road to NC State and then Clemson the next couple of weeks. So one, can they get healthy and stay healthy? Because this is the biggest run of the season. And two, can we see Jordan Travis continue the success that he's had? I can't wait for this game. We're going to learn a lot more about Florida State. I've been saying it. Every week, we we continue to learn more about this Florida State team as they battle injuries, as we see their depth being tested. This is another one of these big games. In those tight games, does Jordan Travis elevate his game? We've seen him do it consistently throughout the year. This is going to be another game where it's not going to be a blowout. Wake Forest, they score too often and too fast to really have them count them out of this football game. It's going to be a great game. I look for Florida State to establish that run, test those linebackers. If there's a weakness in this Wake Forest defense, it is vertically pressing those uh, cornerbacks, hopefully with Johnny Wilson, and then also getting those linebackers in open space. They're not the best tacklers when it comes to tackling in open space. We saw Will Shipley get the best of them a couple times. Guys like Trey Sean Ward, Trey Benson, Lawrence Tuafili, some of the best running – that is probably the best running back room in the ACC. I mean, you have three legitimate – RB1s on one team. They run the ball a lot. They've run the ball pretty well this year. I'm excited to see if they can do that against Wake Forest. It's certainly going to be one of the keys to the game. We appreciate you guys checking us out as usual. Again, if you like the content, consider subscribing. We really do appreciate that. And we'll talk to y'all later.